I will be explaining how to create an image classification model of handwritten numbers using the MNIST dataset. The MNIST dataset is one of the most common datasets used for image classification and it's accessible from many different sources. In fact, even TensorFlow and Keras allow us to import and download the MNIST dataset directly from their API. The MNIST dataset contains 60,000 training images and 10,000 testing images. I'll start off by importing TensorFlow. Import TensorFlow as DF. Shift Enter. By doing so, I'll be importing the module TensorFlow. Now, I will import the dataset from tensorflow.keras.datasets import MNIST. This dataset will further be divided into testing and training datasets and each of them will have the images as well as the target variable which indicates which class the number belongs to. So X train Y train would be the first tuple and X test Y test would be the second tuple. So I will use mnist.load underscore data in order to do this. So I have imported the data. Now by using the dot shape attribute, I will understand how uh, the dimensions of the array is. So the training data set uh, will have 60,000 images, each of which 28 by 28 pixels. And the target variable of the training data set will contain 60,000 classes. And similarly for the testing uh, data set, there will be 10,000 images, each of 28 by 28 pixels, and the target variable of the testing data set will have 10,000 classes. To visualize these numbers, I will use matplotlib. I will import the module matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Matplotlib inline is used to ensure that the image is within the Jupyter notebook. And I will be showing the first image in the training data set. So the first image resembles a phi, and I will check it with the target variable. So y train of zero, it indicates phi. Now I will be in encoding these classes. This will create an array with the class which the number belongs to having one, and the rest will be set to zero. This is known as a one hot encoding. So from keras.utils, import to categorical. So both the training and the testing target variables will be uh, converted to one hot encoded. Now I'll check the dimensions of both the target variables. So each of them will have 10 different classes. So the first uh, image belonged to five. So we can see that all of the indexes are set to zero apart from the one which contains five. Now using NumPy, I will reshape the training and the testing data set. So each of the image was a 28 by 28 pixel. Now I'll convert into a one dimensional array, which will be of length 784. Now I will standardize this array. Standardization is done uh, to make the mean equal to zero and the variance as one. So now I will show how the standard standardized data looks for the first training and the testing image. So th this is how it looks. Now I will create a neural network but before that, I will explain how a neural network works. So starting with a linear equation, if W1, W2, W3 are the weights and X1, X2, X3 are the features with B being the intercept factor known as the bias, the target variable Y will be equal to W1, X1 plus W2, X2 plus W3, X3 plus the bias B. Now in our case, we can consider each of the pixels in the 784 one-dimensional array to be its features. So 
So it starts from X1 to X784 with weights W1 to W784 and a bias B. The target variable Y will be the product sum of these plus B. So what essentially happens in a neural network is taking the observed data and the proposed no model, we will write an algorithm to learn the values of W and B which best fits the data and ultimately we will learn an approximate function which maps the inputs to the output of our data. And this is known as an optimization algorithm. An activation function is applied to each linear output. The purpose of an activation function is to help the neural network find non-linear patterns in the data. Because if we just cascade the neurons, each layer will have linear functions and it will result in a linearity after training of the model. But this is a problem because most of the models will not have a linear function. So using an activation function, the model will have more flexibility in using non-linear patterns. Now instead of setting y to a weighted sum of our input features, we use a few hidden outputs which are weighted sum of the input features which are passed on to the activation function and we get the weighted sum of those hidden outputs and so on. So this is done a few times and then we get the output y. So this enables the model to learn a complex function. So there will be two hidden layers which will be used in order to train this model. The first layer will have the features in the input layer and then there will be an output layer. So the hidden layer will have two nodes and each node will give the output to the next node. So all the weights and the biases associated with these functions will be learned by the algorithm and it will be optimized to give the best fit. So the total number of learnable parameters in any layer will depend on the number of nodes in the preceding layer. So in this example, I will be using 532 nodes for two hidden layers. So this 532 is obtained as the two third of the input, which is 784 plus the bias 10. 10 because it's in the output layer. So going back to the creation of the neural network, I will import the model sequential and the layer as dense using TensorFlow and Keras. And it will have two hidden layers with 532 nodes each and the activation function will be ready. So that is rectified linear activation function. It is a piecewise linear function that gives the output as the input directly if it's positive and otherwise it will be zero. And the output there, I will use the activation function as softmax. So this results in the creation of a neural network. Now I'll compile this neural network using optimizer as SGD, which is stochastic gradient descent. And the loss factor will be categorical cross entropy because there are more than one categories in which the images are being classified into. So the summary will be obtained as follows. Now the model that we have created, we need to fit it with the training data set, which has been standardized and the target variable, which has been encoded. And I will run 10 epochs for this. An epoch is the number of times model runs through the data set in order to learn the rules. So I'll be running this for 10 epochs. So I have trained the model for 10 epochs and now I will check the accuracy for the evaluation of the model with both the testing and the training data set. So the testing data set has an accuracy of approximately 97.8 and the training data set has an accuracy of approximately 99.4 which is a good amount and this model can be used to classify handwritten digits.